Hi everybody, happy Thursday, and if it's Thursday on this channel, that means it's time for a new episode of Let's Talk About Butt Stuff, my playlist dedicated to everything chronic illness, specifically for me, Crohn's disease. My special guest today is my sister, Katie All. Before we get into today's topic, which I'm really excited about, which is the impact of chronic illness on our mental health and vice versa, I wanna take care of some usual business first. First things first, if you like the content, leave me a like below and leave a comment. You can say anything you want. We're trying to build community for people with chronic illness, so there are no wrong answers. While you're down there, click that subscribe button and ding the bell. The bell will give you notifications every time I upload new content to the channel, which for this playlist is every Thursday. All right, everybody, let's get started on the topic of the day, which we are going to focus on mental health and the impact on our chronic illness and vice versa. So today I have an expert, my sister Katie. And without further ado, Katie, why don't you tell everyone a brief overview of why I call you my expert? Okay, well, uh, other than being the uh, funniest sibling, the best true, sibling. True, <laughs> true, 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 true. Just check, kidding. check, check. Just kidding. Um, so my, I'm currently working on becoming a licensed professional counselor in the state of Missouri. Uh, my undergraduate degree is in psychology and um, Right now, I'm currently working on a master's degree uh, to become a clinical mental health professional. So mental health is my jam. That's uh, how I, kind of the lens that I see the world through. And so um, that's, I guess that's why I'm very excited. That's why you take the box. <laughs> but for today, I wanted to do a general overview of the impact of my mental health on my disease and how my disease impacted my mental health because it's two different things that kind of work together and cause me problems. Yeah, totally. And you're like, when you think about it, your mind and your body are connected, sure. right? I think they're also connected to your, like your spirit and your, mm -hmm. you know, the universe. But I think that your mind and your body have such a strong connection that it's impossible for one to not impact the other. So for people who are working through chronic illness right now or, or are going to be living with a chronic illness, their mental health is really important and vice versa. Your mental health is going to affect what happens in your body. So for me specifically with Crohn's, um, the thing I've been told repeatedly over and over, especially in the middle of a pandemic, a very stressful time, yeah. is to try to eliminate my stress and to work on anxiety because anxieties can impact my flair and keep me from healing as quickly as I would like to. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's been a really big challenge. As the chronic illness started to kind of rear its ugly head and I realized there was something really wrong, uh, I look back on my journals, and, which is my one of the tools I use for mm -hmm. my mental health. Yeah. Um, when I look back on my journals and the things I was writing before I got my diagnosis, right up until I got it, I can almost see the stages of anxiety building and the depression t kind of taking over in lots of ways. Yeah. Well, and as your sister, being yeah. very involved with you when, when it was happening, yep. when it was happening and, and being in your life, when you were going through that time leading up to like not knowing yeah. what was going on in your body, um, that was a huge, that had a huge impact on your mental health. It's kind of like when you can define something, you have more control over it. And if you can't define it, or if it's kind of still like up in the air and you're not very certain about something, that's where anxiety creeps in because that's when you have a, an, a, a million possibilities of what it could be or what could be causing you stress or what could be making your body react this way. And that's where you get lost in the land of like going down every rabbit hole of depressing thoughts. Yeah. Um, so I, I watched you kind of go through your journey of like not having the diagnosis, getting the diagnosis and kind of settling in with, with the diagnosis yep. and then kind of coming up from coming out of your depression a little bit and yeah. kind of finding your purpose again. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I've seen you go through a mental health journey over the last, how many months is it? Nine months. Nine so months, this is the, yeah, not, yeah we look, my husband and I just talked about this. It was nine months ago that I first had the, the biggest symptom for me, which was the first fistula. Mm -hmm. So, and at that point, uh, what I would say is that, so I was coming off of a high because that September, right around my birthday, I'd had a wonderful summer with my husband. We'd, we'd done a lot of fun things. We'd just gotten engaged. I was in a great place with my family where we were spending a lot of time together. Uh, and then I had achieved this goal that I kind of didn't know I have where I wrote, wrote a book. Mm. And it, almost as soon as I had come very close to finishing it, the fistula happened, which I didn't know what it was at the time. I've talked about that in other videos. I'll link the video up here that gives the overview about that. But uh, that was the beginning of the mental health slide for me. And I went to a really dark place because for the first three months, there was no answer. And when I went to see the colorectal surgeon the first time, she was pretty sure it wasn't Crohn's disease, which to someone out there may sound a little crazy that I was kind of hopeful that there would 
that maybe that was the answer to it. Mm -hmm. The reason that is, is I have a cousin who has Crohn's disease. I had seen what that looked like and that looked manageable to me. Right. Does, does that make sense? Totally. So I think... Versus, sorry no, to no, interrupt, no. versus something that you've never seen before uh -huh. and so you don't know how to manage it. Right. So, uh, you know, even things like having this YouTube video yep. where you're talking about your experience with Crohn's, it's giving people who may not have somebody in their life as an example of someone with Crohn's, right. you know, it's giving them that example. That's because, my hope. Yeah, you, you can't, well, it kind of like falls in the line of you can't be what you can't see. Right. So, you know, when you, um, when you can't, when you don't have a role model or an example of someone living with the same chronic illness that you're living with, uh, it's hard to imagine yourself living with it and, and picture what your life might look like with it. I would deal with the devil I know rather than the one I don't because the one I don't, I can tell myself a lot of deep, dark, things and somehow go down that rabbit hole of I'll never sit down again. <laughs> I'll never drive a car again. Yeah. But there are multiple studies that show um, that people with irritable bowel disease and people with chronic illness suffer from anxiety and depression at higher rates than people in just the general population. Uh, and it that makes, makes sense. sense. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. I, and I, I told you some, of, uh, this is a little anxiety, but something that I hope someone with IBD will, will connect with. Um, but my biggest anxiety now, and it's, it's kind of a blessing in disguise that we're having the pandemic. And so I'm only at home or at my mom's, like that's mm -hmm. it now, or a doctor's office, nowhere else. But the biggest anxiety I have for when the pandemic is over is, um, the days that I'm having upset tummy and I have something to do two things. One, if I cancel on someone, the guilt and, and things that people throw at us when, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you're canceling on me again, or you're putting me off, which I got some of last fall. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing is, oh, geez, will I be in a place where I can go to the bathroom? I mean, yeah. that sounds really simple to other folks, but like, sure. when we gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> like, totally. <laughs> and it might not be necessarily just go and then uh, you're done. Oh, like you might, yep. If it's a bad flare up yep. or if something is happening, like bleeding or sure. Right. Do I, yeah. Do I have the tools I need? Mm hmm. Yeah, so two things I want to unpack there, Please. definitely. First, the guilty feelings that you feel when you cancel. Mm -hmm. And then second is what what I like to think about um, with chronic illness and specifically IBD is it's, it's like you're carrying a backpack full of weights mm. that someone without chronic illness or IBD is not carrying. Yeah. So in the mental health I like world, that. yeah. So in the mental health world, and that can be trans. I mean, that can obviously be transferred over to over to anything. So people who are like marginalized in society are also carrying that extra backpack and that extra weight that perhaps the like privileged white uh, folks in society are not carrying. True. Um, that so that adds an extra layer of something that's almost. I don't want to say you have to overcome, but it's it just adds an extra something that you have to carry around with you and manage while you're also just generally managing your mental health. So especially with IBD, that is there because you're thinking about, are there gonna be restrooms that are conducive to someone who might need like more comfort in yeah. the restroom? Yeah. And also like everything you put in your body, you yes. have to be very conscious of. Yep. And that's a, and mean, for me, that's hard because you know, I love food, I live for food, <laughs> our family bonds <laughs> yeah, over food, totally. we love to cook. I mean, yeah. to, so you know, to it's a shift. Totally, and to have to be conscious of like, okay, if I eat this thing that I wanna eat, I know I'm gonna pay for it later, it's gonna impact me later. For folks with IBD too, could also transition over into like eating disordered or some type mm. of disordered eating because you're limiting what you're allowing yourself to eat. Obviously you want to in some way to make sure you have a comfortable life, but if you're starting to limit yourself so much that it's calorie restriction or, uh, you know, whatever, that can lead to disordered eating. Yeah. So um, to have to, always be extra co conscious of the food you're eating that's huge and that not only impacts like when you're sitting down in front of the plate it impacts when you shop how you shop how you prepare your food who prepares your food mm -hmm. where can you go to when eat. you want to go meet friends to eat yep. i mean that impacts uh, your food is a huge part of your daily life yeah and you need it to live mm -hmm. the two things that i wanted to unpack was that mm -hmm. so the feeling like you have to carry that extra weight yep. around with you for your every day of yeah, life. Yeah. Um, and also knowing that you are with that every day of your forever. life forever. And that's yeah. the thing about chronic illness is it's not going away. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, you know, it's never about like overcoming my chronic illness because you, you can't. It's, yeah. it's learning how to live with it. The other thing I wanted to unpack was um, the feelings of guilt when you cancel oh, on people. Yes. Yes. Uh, so some of it's self, right? Some of it's self-inflicted. 
Um, and then some of it is is honestly friends who I think don't have a concept of, of what it is. I, first, I haven't had it very long, right? I've only been diagnosed since March and I'm not seeing anyone. So it's easy right now. But back in the fall when I didn't know what it was, there were some friends who threw guilt and shade my way when I'd have to say, I can't, I can't do it. And, I, and the refrain I would hear, it's interesting, I see it in my Instagram Crohn's life and Crohn's problems hashtags all the time is the guilt and shame that's thrown on us by family and friends when we say no or mm -hmm. when we say we can't and it's oh you're canceling again or you know oh you know oh it's your illness. Sorry I thought of an example when Please? you were talking about the shame and guilt that people throw uh, made me think of the Christmas when mom when we were at the Darren Busters yep. and you wanted a like <laughs> sparkling water or something yep. and they didn't have it or whatever and she mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not paying seven dollars <laughs> that doesn't sound like her. oh well <laughs> except it does yeah there was a moment where it was I don't know paying seven dollars like I'll pay the seven dollars I need it to settle my tummy and I can't drink we'll get a sprite which will have me on the toilet in about 45 minutes so your choice why are you making such a big deal out of this that was the next, which <laughs> layers and layers uh, of shame so and guilt. Anyways, but yeah, totally. And and that was before there was a diagnosis. She's gotten mm -hmm. obviously much better, but um, but and that's someone who could not love me more, could not more have my best interest at heart, right. dismissing me in a moment that was for her frustrating that I wasn't playing along, mm. which is I think where people come from when they do those things to us is they're kind of thinking like, oh man, again. Yeah. And seriously, is it that big of a deal? Like, and it's like, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that's important. So my my like initial thing I wanted to touch on this is like, like educating the people in your life about what you're going yes. through and being very transparent with like, hey, I'm you know, and as transparent as you feel comfortable being. I'm a because, little more comfortable than yeah, most. You're pretty open. <laughs> but uh and, and then you but that leads me to what you said of, you know, how mom responded in that way was it made you feel like she dismissed what you were going right. through. So letting, you know, if you do feel like your friends are shaming you or someone in your life is shaming you or making you, you know, saying something that ignites some feelings of guilt or shame in you makes me feel guilt because you're dismissing my feelings. And it makes me feel like I should just play along and act more normal because that would be more comfortable for you when uh, the, something's going on that I have no control over. Right. Or the only amount of control I can have over it is to stay home today. Right. Or to... Not come. Or not come to things. Or not, uh, not drink Sprite and drink seltzer water instead. So, you know, just being open to the level that you're comfortable being open with to your friends because unfortunately you might have to educate them a little bit about what you're going through um, so that they would know not to maybe respond in the way that they're responding. And I do think it's harder for some people, especially around IBD, which is why I titled these Let's Talk About Butt Stuff. <laughs> part of that is for humor, but part of it is also to destigmatize it and to take that away from uh, from ourselves a little bit to, to so that people can understand it's okay to talk about this stuff and if i don't tell you what's going on with me you're not going to quite have a grasp of what it is and again i'm more open than most people yeah. and i am 100 percent willing to lay the fistula out there and yeah. put it all out there for someone to see but someone may not be and so mm -hmm. just to even do a generalized explanation of hey here's what ibd or ulcerative colitis under the ibd umbrella mm -hmm. looks like for me or whatever even a, a short conversation that may be a little bit uncomfortable in the moment is going to give dividends way into the future as long as someone can understand you know oh when you're in flare-up you know for you it's about bleeding and discomfort and which sometimes that's enough for someone to kind of be like oh okay uh, yeah. and back off which is really what you need and the only other thing I'd say before we move on quickly is something you've taught me that I, I try to say over and over and I put it out on Instagram sometimes is no is a complete sentence mm right yeah. so saying no there is a period after it and it's over yep. like there, there is there isn't a, a you don't but have to explain yourself mm -mm. you you know you you are in control of your environment and especially in this in this social setting like taking the example of a friend wanting to come yep. or wanting to go out to eat or yep. whatever and having to cancel yep. that is not i mean if you miss going out to eat with someone that is not life or death no <laughs> you can say no and yeah. uh the world will continue yeah well and it shouldn't feel like a slight on that person either and i think that's the important thing and, and one more thing before we move on from this topic that i want to say is especially right now um i have 
no guilt or shame when I tell someone I can't go, uh, my husband can't go, mm -hmm. and I, I say to them, my immune system's at a zero, and it is life and death for me right now. Yeah. Like if I, you know, I'm still a fat right now, and it's true, and if I am with my immune system, I am terrified that if I were to contract COVID, for me, that could be a death sentence, and mm -hmm. it is not worth dinner out, it is not worth hanging out for an hour or making you feel yeah. more comfortable to put myself at risk. And, and for other people, feel empowered in that because yeah. this is a, a unique time. Yeah. I wonder, does it feel more like, um, be, taking the example of like going out to eat and having to cancel, um, do, do you think that what's coming up for you is like they are upset because you didn't, it's last minute that you're canceling? Yes. Okay, yes. so, and that's a big because Sometimes for obviously you you have no you have no control over what's going on in your body. However, it's maybe just acknowledging to them like I realize this is last minute yeah. and know that this is not me disrespecting your time because right. I value your time. Yes. You're my friend and I obviously want to see you and I love you. I just can't right now. Right. So I wonder you know I wonder if maybe I can work on that more acknowledging because, yes. that and maybe that would help with your like the guilty feelings that come up for you too because you. You know, you are acknowledging why they're hurt and, and their emotions in the interaction. Yeah, that's true. And so maybe that would help. It would, yeah. No, that's a feelings. great that's a great tip. <laughs> so another thing that I wanted to talk about is so there were some dark times, there was some some deep depression for me. And one of the things that I know we have talked about a lot and you impress upon me a lot that I've leaned into more as I'm getting into this is the it's okay to not be okay vibe, feeling mantra, whatever you want to call it. Totally. I mean, in my personal opinion, that is where we need to get as far as mental health is related. Um, everything is not always love and light and everything is not always perfect. And, uh, there are times in life where you're going to feel down yeah. and, uh, whether, whether the reasons you're feeling down are within your control, out of your control, or you don't know what the reasons are, you're just feeling down, it is okay. And it is a beautiful thing that we're humans and that we have all these emotions that we are able to feel. Because like I said earlier, our emotions are our body's way of telling us something's up and you gotta address it. So maybe it's that you're happy and you're feeling this elated, joyful feeling, that's great, you recognize that. Recognize that you're happy and recognize what led you to, to those feelings and maybe that's your body's way of telling you, you love, um, I don't know, gardening. Yeah. And it's like telling you that, hey, we love your body's way of telling you, hey, we love this activity and it's bringing us joy yeah. and it's putting us closer to nature and we're using Get your hands talent. in the dirt, that's good for your soul. Yeah, so it's your body's way of telling you that this is good, this is something we like, let's keep doing this because it's making us happy. Yeah. Um, let's say you're, you know, I'm working in sales and every single day you wake up and you dread going to work every day. And when you're sitting in front of your phone, needing to make a, co a cold call or whatever, and you start feeling down and you start feeling sad, well, that's your body's way of telling you, hey, we hate this and this is not fulfilling and mm -hmm. we feel drained right now. And, um, you know, so I'm long story short, I'm just trying to make the point that emotions are a beautiful, wonderful thing about being human and it's okay to feel up and down and everything in between and you should feel that way. You should never, you know, anytime you're stuck in one emotion for too long, that's a signal that something's not right. Okay. And whether it's an emotion, I don't, there are no good and bad emotions, but whether it's like a, a happy, joyful place that you're in too long or a sad, lower, depressive place that you're in too long, that's a sign that something, something's got to Change. change. So what? find something that is a project or a task that you can see through to the end, mm -hmm. where you can complete it and see it through to the end, no matter if it's something little or if it's something big. So what would be an example of like a project or a task that you could do that you could see through to the end? Laundry. For me, that was laundry. That was the one thing I would, I would get up into because I don't like the way my husband folds my things. Oh, but it's so sweet when he does it. I would hate it if somebody else folded my 100, clothes. Hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, it's a familial thing. Um, so, so that was a that was a purpose that I could get up. It wasn't too much. It, you know, I was literally walking downstairs, tossing it in the machine, turning it on, and I could go lay back down. I knew that I had a window of time before he got home and wanted to help. Oh. My heart, my heart. But um, that so that was a task I could see through beginning to end. And, and it's interesting that you say that because I almost wonder if it wasn't my 
because that, it's not like we had talked about that at the time, but that was the really the only thing I was willing to get up and do. We were ordering out meals. I mean, j just, I couldn't even cook, would do nothing mm -hmm. other than laundry. Yeah. That was it. And Netflix. Yeah. Uh, so something I was going to talk about, one of the things that my GI doc specifically gave me as homework every day is that I said in a previous video is the steps. And the idea behind it is, for me, uh, certain things I eat slow down my digestion and make it difficult. Plus, I have a stricture right now, which we're going to talk about in a future video, but that makes digestion much more difficult. And the thing he keeps impressing upon me is walk, 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 walk. So something that I've talked to you about, but I'd like to share with people out here, is uh, I was never really a big walker or mover much. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, which is how I got to this size. Okay. But the the walking has been, for me, it feels like a little mental health thing. I told you, I put mm -hmm. on my little um, meditation music. I And I, I like it whether I'm with my husband or alone. I kind of go out to the park, which is very close to our house, and, and just get lost in in walking and my thoughts. And, and it's like I allow myself to kind of process things mm -hmm. and think through. So um, what is the connection for people out there between that and what it does for like my mental health because yeah. someone out there may be getting the same advice and, and not making the connection yet so mm -hmm. what would that what does that look like sure so I physiologically you have there are benefits to walking obviously for your body because it aids in digestion it's a physical activity you're moving your joints and bones so we know the like physical benefits mm -hmm. of just going for a walk right uh, for your mental health though it kind of puts you in a almost uh, meditative state. So yeah. if you are going on a walk um, with the intention of just walking, or even if you're walking to a destination, there is a set amount of time where nothing else is really going on. One thing, another like tip of something you can do and something that I think is easier when you are walking because you're kind of eliminating distractions is to acknowledge what you are feeling at that moment. Mm. So, uh, that can be scary. Totally. And I get it because talking about feelings has kind of, as a society, we've put that in the like, oh, only sissies and girls do that. <laughs> None of that on this channel. <laughs> yeah. Bring them on. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so sometimes just acknowledging what you're feeling at the time can be really powerful for your mental health. As I've mentioned before, giving a name to something or at least defining it or stating what it is gives you more control over it, okay? So when you're walking or any time, when something's coming up for you and you start to feel yourself drifting into like a lower place, um, try maybe a grounding exercise if you need it or just acknowledge what you are feeling at that time. So a grounding exercise, what, what does that look like? Um, like a, a something to bring you into the present moment. So it's any anything you can do that brings you into the present moment, into the here and now, um, so that you can be aware of what am I, what am I actually feeling at this very moment? Not what am I thinking about? What am I ruminating on? What is bringing me anxiety? But more just what emotion am I feeling right now? So a, a grounding exercise that I like to talk about with clients a lot is the five senses grounding exercise. There are many variations of this, so go online and look for one that drives with you, but um, use your five senses. So name one thing you can hear right now, the fan. Name one <laughs> thing you can see right now, this blinding light. One thing <laughs> you can feel, uh, the carpet under my feet. Mm. One thing you can smell, uh, my coffee. Mm. And one thing you can taste, uh, my coffee. <laughs> so just, but like grounding yourself in the here and now so I can see something, hear something, feel something. And then I think, okay, what emotion am I feeling right now? And honestly, what I'm feeling right now is like content. Yeah, same. Yeah. You feeling the same emotion? Not, Did you see well, my no, feelings I, wheel? Let's talk about your feelings wheel. <laughs> How does the feelings wheel come into? No, it's just a... Oh. It, Google the feelings wheel and you'll know We'll add a picture but, of it. Yeah, but it's just, uh, you know, it, like giving you a list of potential feelings to choose I would say from. Right now I feel very grateful. This is mm. a grateful moment. I was yeah. looking forward to this. I, 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 I like our energy together any anytime. Always. Definitely when we're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always going to be a huge advocate for mental health 
and for counseling and for therapy. And I think that everyone needs it. And I think you need it sometimes when you're in, in the good places and when you're in what you perceive as bad places. So I'm always gonna be an advocate for that. But especially when you are diagnosed with a chronic illness, uh, that is, it's like you've invited, you haven't invited it. because. So you probably didn't want them there. It's like having a monster come and live in your home and you didn't invite them, you didn't really want them there, but they're there and you're gonna have to live with them for the rest of your life. So sure, you might wanna talk to somebody about that. And the benefit of talking to a mental health professional about it is because is they have special training uh, and they go through a lot of schooling and a lot of practice to get to a point where they are a supportive and understanding, unbiased, non-judgmental person for you to talk to who doesn't have any skin in the game. So if, especially if you're dealing with a chronic illness where you'd love to talk to Ricky about everything you're going through, sometimes it feels like you're putting your, you're putting your stuff onto him yeah. or that when you talk to him about it, like, you know, he can't always be your person you go to right. because that weighs on him and it weighs totally. on you. And I don't want my fears, uh, and there are a lot of them for, for anybody with chronic illness. The, the biggest fear for anybody with chronic illness, just to put a name to what it feels like, is I love the monster analogy. But for me, um, it was like a life sentence that I couldn't appeal. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's how I think of it in my head, right? Mm. It was like, it was like I'd, I'd gone to court, I proved my case, <laughs> and then I lost. And no matter what I did, I couldn't overturn it, right? Mm -hmm. When you're in a space where you know you're never gonna shake it, mm -hmm. that's the mental game for me, is kind of, uh, because I'm a person who likes to think I can overcome anything, mm -hmm. or I can, I can do anything I set my mind to. I'm never gonna get this angry butt under control at times. <laughs> you know, when I'm in a flare, it's just, yeah. it is what it is. So right. that's been really hard for me to kind of wrap my brain around the, it's forever. Yeah, your angry bat monster yep. has moved into your home, taken over. Taken over, destroyed and, it. Exactly, and every time you leave your house, you have to put on a baby Bjorn or whatever yep. those are called, and you have to carry around that baby yep. monster with you everywhere, everywhere you go. Along with gauze and wipes and all <laughs> kinds of extra tools. Oh, yes, and no one wants to come over and cuddle snuggle on your baby monster or your baby butt monster. No. <laughs> but no. no one appreciates it. No. Nope. Talking to a mental health professional about what's going on with you when you're when you get a diagnosis for something that's a chronic illness is a place you can go to talk to someone that you don't have to then live with that person or yeah. uh, that person isn't invested in your life outside of that professional counseling relationship. And I do realize that counseling is not something that's available to everyone. Uh, it's it's expensive, and if yeah. your insurance doesn't cover it, it can be. It, it can price a lot of people out of it. Is there a university near you oh, and that's good that tip. has a counseling program? Because chances are they're in that part of that program, the counselors in training like me, are looking for uh, practical experience. And so there's either a center on campus or they're involved in an internship somehow. And if you do work with a counselor who is in their training program, it's usually cheaper. Um, and they have the same training. They might not have the same level of experience or years in the game but it is still a more affordable option for you to get mental health um, counseling without having to pay the $100 an hour, $150 an hour plus that some counselors charge if your insurance doesn't cover it. Your insurance might cover mental health counseling, so. What's the best way for someone to find that out? Just to call their insurance company? Yep, call okay. your insurance company or look at your uh, like declaration page or whatever and see if- You're the only person I know that would have that declaration page handy. <laughs> So in summary, um, the things that we've covered as far as mental health is related, especially with chronic illness and irritable bowel disease specifically, Crohn's, um, so some of the important points we hit that I want to just summarize. Um, first of all, the uh, impact that this is going to have on the people in your life, the interpersonal relationships in your life. So when we were talking about you know having plans with friends to go out to eat or whatever and then having to cancel those plans last minute um, just know that that's okay and this is something that you're learning to live with and you might have to educate your friends or your family or the people in your life a little bit about what you're going through now it's on them to, at some to some extent to educate themselves too and to you know it's not like you should have to educate them on everything you're going through but you might have to just plant the seed of like hey I'm going through something internally and it's I'm learning how to live with it myself I value your time I love you and respect you but I have to cancel these plans yeah 
or whatever the case. Be. And I'm sorry, it's last minute. I liked that when yeah. you use acknowledge acknowledge the yeah. thing that maybe you're doing. Yeah, acknowledge what may be acknowledge what may be hurting them in that situation, and um, you know that that can go a long way. Okay. Um, and then also we were talking about uh, like the benefits of walking to mental health. And that kind, of, that kind of stemmed from when we were talking about if you're depressed, finding something that kind of gives you a little purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and then it led into doctors talking to you about, you know, walk because it's beneficial physiologically for you, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but then also how that can connect to your mental health is that it puts you in somewhat of a meditative state or it gives you something to do that is not like multitasking um, 18 different things at one time. You're walking and you're listening to a podcast, listening to music, talking to your partner, whatever. Um, or you're just walking in silence and just letting your mm -hmm. thoughts come in. Uh, that, that is very beneficial to your mental health uh, because it puts you in that meditative state where you might feel like you can actually take the time to recognize what emotion you're feeling at that time. Yeah. Um, which was another important point of, you know, you. You don't have to have everything figured out and you don't have to know exactly what to do when you're feeling angry, but if you can just acknowledge when you're feeling angry, I am feeling angry. That is powerful and that gives you some control over it. Uh, mm -hmm. So acknowledging your emotions and naming them when they're happening for you is a really big first step for mental health. And um, that's where we'll put... Um, the feelings wheel. The feelings wheel. We'll do a link to one in the description so people yeah. can go and kind of get an idea for what that, what that looks like. Yeah. Because it's not just sad, glad, mad, afraid. Right. Those aren't the, those aren't things. There's more. There are tons of them, and so sometimes having like a list of feelings that maybe if you feel like consulting it whenever you're like lost and you're like, I something's going on. And I don't really know what's happening. Look at the wheel and see where you fall. Okay. Um, and then the last thing we talked about was the importance of finding a mental health professional. So uh, especially if you have a chronic illness, but just for everyone. Uh, I think so. Yeah, having someone that you can talk to who is not, who doesn't have skin in your game. So they're not a family member or a friend. It's great that you have those people in your life, um, but everybody needs someone who's not uh, invested in the outcome of your life beyond a counseling relationship. Uh, because that's a place you can go to that's non-judgmental, non-biased, and they're trained professionals. They're, they're trained to be supportive and to be empathic and to uh, understand and investigate and help you work through what you're going through. Wow, I love that. And to check the what page of your health insurance? Oh, the declaration page. But, um, that page. yeah, or if, uh, if you don't keep it in an accordion style folder with all your other important papers, you could just go to your <laughs> <laughs> health insurance website. So if you're not one of those people that counts your Girl Scout cookies. With good reason, because. Occasionally someone may slip in there and steal one. Exactly. If I didn't count my Girl Scout cookies, I would there's never have any. There's some Moas. There's some Moas. I mean, they're supposed to be open to everybody. Yes. And, it, and as you all know, <laughs> there are only like eight That's come true. in a pack. It's true. So you have to. You use... get very few. The Keebler is much more oh, generous. Yeah, with but the... not as good. We all know that. That went to a... This is... And, and now you see why food for me can sometimes be a problem. Because I love it so much. As do I. It all circles back to food. But go find out from your insurance company if you have mental health coverage, yes. uh, who's in your network if you do have it. Um, and then if not, find an affordable way to get a counselor, which is either going maybe to a university where there's a counseling program or find a counseling intern or a counselor in training where the fee might be less than an experienced mental health professional. But yeah, anyways. that's wonderful. I thank you so much for joining me. My yeah. lovely, talented, intelligent sister. Go on. <laughs> oh, so many of the adjectives. Um, my, I so thank you for your time. I appreciate you. I, I do look forward to, we are going to do a few more collaborations. I mm -hmm. hope that'll be a little more deep dives into specifics of things that impact people with chronic illness, specifically IBD. Yeah. Uh, and I so appreciate your time and you being here. For everybody that is here for the first time, do me a favor and click that subscribe button below and ding the bell for notifications of new episodes. I upload to the Let's Talk About Butt Stuff playlist every Thursday like clockwork. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you being here. And if this is the first time, click that like button and leave us a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you this time next week. Bye. Bye.